Hey designers, I'm Charlie. I'm a web designer. I am not a motion designer. However, I did recently create an animation to go in the header section of the ConvertKit homepage. ConvertKit is the email marketing software company I work for. And uh, I just decided that I wanted the header of our homepage to have something animated that showed a tour through our product. If you haven't seen them, I make weekly vlogs just showing you my life and my work. And I was talking about this animation in those vlogs. And I had a few people ask if they could see a more in-depth look at uh, how I created it. And so that's what I want to do in this video. Let's start off by me playing you the animation though, so you can get a look at that. So the animation starts off with this footage of a creator, my friend Eric actually, uh, painting in this blob, which morphs into a landing page. Someone fills out the landing page, like signs up to his e fake email list. Um, then we go through this flow, which is kind of like an email marketing automation flow, showing stuff happening because you signed up to the landing page. And it ends with someone being sent an email and uh, then the header section there morphs back into a video and it loops around. I was really proud of how this came out. I think it's a good demonstration of um, who uses us and what we're for. So let me show you how I, as a not motion designer, made this happen. So I created this animation using After Effects. This is a tool that I'd used before in university where I did actually take some motion graphics papers. So I had like a bit of a background understanding in animation, um, Kino animation in particular, and how After Effects works. I'm not gonna give you a 101 on how After Effects works in this video. There's plenty of other tutorials out there will do that. But let me just walk you through my file and um, the different pieces that make up this animation of mine. Because my motion design skills are limited, um, really, this is just a lot of keyframe animation. It's playing with the transform elements that we have here in After Effects of position and scale mostly to have things appear on screen at certain times when I need them. Um, and I just like make a keyframe, move it and make the next keyframe. So we start off with this footage, as you saw. And um, instead of it being a square, it's in this blob mask, which um, all I did was have the vector in Illustrator and then I just like command C and then um, pasted it, command V, on top of the footage and then it turns it into a vector mask, which is really helpful. So that's that's where we started out. Um, to get this morphing piece, see how it uh, transforms itself into fitting in the landing page. So I made another mask, the shape of this in Illustrator and just copied that in. And then all you need to do essentially to morph two masks together is, uh, so there would be a second mask here um, you make a keyframe and you just copy the keyframe from the second mask and paste it onto the path of the first mask. Um, and then it'll animate itself between the two versions, between the two keyframes. I did have a couple of issues with this where, um, like see how the this sort of like shrinks down nicely beforehand, like this top point, for example, was like flipping itself over and trying to end up down here. Um, so if, if you're like trying to do something like this as well, then the issue is with the order that your points are in. In Illustrator, what I did to figure this out was add a stroke with an arrow to my shape. And this showed me where the starting and ending point was of my shape. So you kind of want the, the start and end of both of your shapes to be in the same place. If I put one on this guy as well, we'll be able to see. See how this shape, which was my piece of the landing page, the arrow is up here. And in this shape, my blob, the arrow is up here. So it means that the points are sort of going in the same um, direction and starting in the same place. You also want your arrows to be pointing the same way. That was what was causing the flipping, which was a big issue that I had to start out with. Honestly, like it was like a bunch of trial and error to get this right. There's, people were suggesting a bunch of different things, but you can make a compound path which you can then um, use this little attributes panel to reverse the direction of the path. And that's one way you can do it. I also found myself having to go in and like delete a point and then re-add it to just try and get the arrow to end up in the right place. So I don't know, um, however you get there, you want the arrows to be sort of in the same place, pointing the same way to do this morphing thing. The pieces of the landing page, so I've got it here in my file as uh, a sub composition. I don't know if that's the right word. I mocked up this landing page in Illustrator. It's like a yeah, vector version of one of our actual landing page templates that we have in ConvertKit. And then I just animated each piece. Some of it is done with masks, like uh, the background here, for example, see these, these two keyframes down here. We've just got um, the mask animating over and then everything else appearing in. And I would just pick up and move these pieces to be at around about the time that I wanted them. Um, 
And if you're wondering why these keyframes look different to these ones, for example, if I just move this up and show you, um, I love me some easy ease. It just makes things sort of like smoother um, in terms of the animation. I don't know. I yeah, don't really know the difference between a lot of this, this stuff, but I just usually turn that on uh, and it ends up looking better. Just going to be honest there. So I, I basically just looked at the finished landing page product and thought, how do I want stuff to come in? So I decided I wanted this coming out from the side. And I don't know if you can even see the dots on this background, but these these dot elements emerging from the sides and I wanted them to be slightly offset as well. I didn't want anything to feel too perfect, I think, um, or too sudden in a way either. One of my favorite tricks to do for animating something in, if we look at how I've got these keyframes set up here, I start with it at a lower position than what it's going to end up at. And I start with it at 0% opacity. And then I have the opacity ending at 100 slightly before the final position keyframe ends. And then you just get this nice like drifting in kind of look where it appears like uh, fades in and moves up into place. I think it's a really easy way to get something animated and looking kind of good. For the form fields here, I actually recorded my screen as I filled it like typed into a landing page uh, and then just put a mask around them. That's how I got them in there looking like this. My cursor coming in here is just a keyframe animation again, like starting in one position, ending in another. Um, to make it look like the button was clicked, I had the button scale go down slightly. So you can see here these three uh, keyframes. So the button scale goes down to look like someone like pressed it, you know, and then coming back over to the main animation file. Um, I had the image of Eric, which, you know, had to be its own thing for the start. And then this composition of the landing page building in, they all move up together as this line extends out from below and we go into the flow. So these are all vectors as well that I put in. Um, this is in automation layers is it's another own file. And this is like a longer file. So it's not the same shape as the uh, final product ended up being. So in this separate longer composition that was like the length of um, the whole of my graphic, I suppose, is where I animated this little dot here coming down a blue line and into the point in the automation. Um, and there was a few things that I did as part of this where I had like the if I'm up enough for you to see it, the line extends and then the dot follows. I just thought that was nicer than the line being like attached to the dot the whole way. It just might feel like more stuff is happening. I don't know. Um, and I also had the point that it gets to when, when the dot touches it, it like looks like something happened. Like it, my idea was that it was being filled up by um, the action happening, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> so we have it go down. Um, to the next one. And then if I zoom in on this part here, this yes, no part. So here was where the little dot had to make a choice of which way it was going to go. And so it follows along to the left hand side. And I managed to get this dot following this exact path again through using a mask. So in Illustrator, I had my shape. This was my shape of the path here. Um, and I copied, come on, see, copy the vector points. Then I added it to a shape layer, which you can see up the top here. It's not going to like look like anything. That's not the point. We just want to have the points in uh, After Effects. And sometimes when you paste it in, it doesn't go to the exact right point on the page. So you have to like move the shape layer around to get it right. And I think how this worked, uh, it was a bit of trial and error for me, honestly, was then I would just copy the mask, like copy on that there and paste it onto the position transform option. So like, I didn't want to make it a mask on this shape. I wanted to use the points as a path for the position. So I pasted it then, and then you get this little thing happening, which has like a bunch of different points uh, in between. But you can like pick it up and drag the start and end point to change the speed at how it's going. But I think each of these points is like the point on my path, you know, um, and that's what makes it follow along, which is really cool. I could have like moved it manually to make it follow this, but it was just a lot easier to have the points already there, you know, and to make it do that. So that was really cool. I don't know if I explained that very well, so I might leave a link to some videos that helped me figure this out in the description. Um, yeah, then we go down into this point, which is the end of the automation part of things. So back to this file. So what I did then once I had that file of the animation all happening with the dot following down different paths, was um, put it into this frame, this like right size of the video that it's going to end up as, 
Uh, and as you can see here, I've animated the position of it. So I just like moved the position so that the right thing was in frame at each time. Um, and sometimes that involved moving it along when in this part here in particular, when the dot goes to the left, I wanted to move the thingy along. And I chose to have this be very like angled, like it was foot, foot, foot. <laughs> Is the technical term for it um, rather than like drifting itself away but um these points like paths in after effects are kind of like vectors in illustrator where there's um you know handles where you can make them curved if you want to for things to move in a bit more like smooth way it's up to you so yeah the last thing that happened on the animation file was the dot getting to this point and then we start the email layers. This is just the mask animating down. I did the same thing here with the cursor, like shrinking the email a little bit to look like it had been pressed, look like it had been clicked. Then the email mask expands down further and I moved the automation layers and the email layers at the same time, just so it would end up being in the same place. And usually how I do that is make a keyframe and then have both of them selected and just move them both at the same time so that the, yeah, things happen together and you're not like moving one and then guessing where the other one should end up. And then inside my email layers composition, all that happens is the cursor coming in and clicking on the lesson button, which kind of like is the action that ends the, the whole animation. To make it loop back around again, as you saw, so we've got this image here of Eric inside that composition, but I also have it up here as the final top layer on my piece. So I did the same mask morphing thing again, where I copied, there was two masks, I copied the points from one, moved it to the other so that it would morph between the two. And again, I had to work with getting the star and endpoints right. It did take a little bit of finessing to get this in exactly the right spot, like exactly overlaid with the email layers file. So then all that happens is, yeah, that this moves and morphs back into a blob and it loops back around again. To get the looping feeling, I had to make sure that I knew exactly where the start point was so that I could like stop it at the end, if that makes sense. So uh, in this file here, let me go into it. I have the static shot of Eric. This is the one that ends up in the email. Then we start the motion. And then another static shot, and this is the one that ends up in the landing page. So I put markers in here for where that start and end of the motion was so that I could bring that through in here. Then you just go in here and I go markers update from source and it'll show you any markers that you've made in that previous file in here. So as you can see at the start, if I just go back to here, it starts out at number two is the first frame. Then we go over and that's when it starts to shrink down. So at the end here, I want the animation to end on marker number two, which is the exact marker where the animation started, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's why that is in here for, for me to know how to line it up and it takes the guesswork out of it. So that is a look at um, how I did the animation. I hope that some of that at least made sense. Like I said, I'm no motion design pro. So a lot of this was just trial and error, having the idea for what I wanted it to do. Um, and then just like trying things out until I got it to do what I wanted. But you can get pretty far, I think, in After Effects with just knowing basic keyframe animation, like moving the position of one thing from here to here while you're scaling it at the same time. Um, understanding that, you can actually get quite a bit done. Um, to end off, I just want to show you this very messy Figma file, which is where I was thinking through how it would work. Um, initially, I only had two steps, so that's what this is showing here. So I just had like, did make like a storyboard, I suppose, um, of how it would start, how it would float up to here and then end on an email. That helped me think through it. And then when I introduced the this point as well, these black boxes and me like thinking that's kind of like the frame of what things will be in shot at each time. And laying it out like this helped me think about what I needed that final file to be in order to make it happen. I tried to keep it very simple. So this is like, while it looks very similar to our actual app UI, it's a highly simplified version because when things are moving around, I wanted to make things clear enough that, um, yeah, people didn't have to take too long to understand what was going on. Yeah, just simplify it as simple as possible and thinking through a way that I could show our product in a really good light. So taking people through an automation to give a bit of behind the scenes look about what happens when you sign up to a landing page and like how you end up being sent an email. It was a really fun project to work on, if a little frustrating at times, but I'm proud that I managed to figure it out in the end. So I hope you enjoyed having this look through my very messy file. I'm sure there's many things that I could have done differently and I'm sure that all the professional motion designers can tell me about that down below in the comments. But thanks for watching and hope you got some ideas out of this. 
and maybe it can encourage you as a designer to step out of your comfort zone. This was definitely way out of my comfort zone and not in my usual wheelhouse of things to do. Um, but I'm glad that I did it. I learned a lot and I've got something really cool out of it to go on our homepage. So that's a win. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.